welcome back to another slice of Silicon Hills. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Moore, and today I'm here with the CEO of Sober Monkeys, Angie Brinkley. Hey. So thanks for coming on the show. No problem. And Angie has created a uh, designated driver service for uh, people in Austin, especially around 6th Street. And you know, I know I went to UT, right? And I did really like going to 6th Street, but there was always that problem of what if I, I drive there and I'm a little bit too drunk to drive back? What do I do? So kind of walk me through how, how Sober Monkeys can help here. Well, so, as you said, there's lots of entertainment going on in Austin every night of the week. And so what Sober Monkeys does is it drives you, we drive you home in your own car so that you and your car get home and you have it in the morning. So if you need a ride, you either give us a call on the phone or you can actually book an online reservation uh, ahead of time. So that if you know you're going to go out, then you can book 12 a.m. And that way you don't have to wait or anything. You know that we'll be there at 12 a.m. wherever you say you need to be picked up and then we'll take your home in your okay. own car. And so how, how do you do that with... Do you, like, you bring uh, like a team of two people? Right. There's always a team of two drivers. Oh, okay. One drives you home in your own car and the okay. other one follows in their car to pick up the driver after we dropped you off. Oh, okay, cool. How did you get the idea for this? Because I don't, I don't think there's another service that does that, right? Well, there are other services that do that, but we're the biggest one in Austin right now. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, what happened was I saw a lot of people uh, in bars, restaurants, just different venues over the past year where, or actually past couple of years, when I started going out more and just the conversations I would hear people having with their friends when they wanted to get their car home and their friends were too too drunk or their friends thought they were too drunk to drive home so they would try to take the keys or they would they would offer to drive them home to get them a cab but they were so focused on trying to get their car home and having it there in the morning that they wouldn't listen to them and they would go ahead and drive drunk and wow. so their friends would be really frustrated they're like oh you know but their friends are but these people are so focused they just need their car in the morning they need their car in the morning and they don't want to leave it behind because in austin you can get towed it could get broken into. That's right. Parking is right. particularly expensive. Right. Okay, now right? parking is extremely expensive, and it has changed a lot over the years. And so you can't just leave your car downtown anymore. And and also you're going to see um, a lot of people, they don't want to have to bother a friend or take a, t take a cab in the morning to go back and get the car. Right. And then your entire. So people kind of end up kind of stuck. Yeah. In this situation. They get stuck. So we're yeah. creating, we we've, so I figured, you know what, this is the option. This is an option people can take uh, if they go out and they either drink too much and they don't really they didn't realize they were going to drink too much. They can take the car or we sorry, we can take their car home for them and they don't have to worry about it or they can book in, in advance so when oh. they know they're going to have or they're afraid they might drink too much. And, you know, OK, so you can just say this is my party night and right. have somebody pick me up at 2 a.m. Yeah. And okay. about 50 percent of the people that we drive home in their own cars book an online reservation eight hours to 24 hours ahead of time because oh. they know they just you know and dwis are a pretty big deal in austin it's not something that that anybody messes with right so okay so what's the what's the business model for this so it's a transaction based business model and um we we take credit cards we take cash we take it any, any way you want except for a check okay <laughs> And what's the, what's the the cost as far as like sustaining you guys? Like, what's your what's your price starting out? Um, we we start at thirty dollars for zero to five miles. Oh, okay. And then we go all the way up to one hundred and ten if you're going uh, up to thirty five miles out. Oh, okay. We always we always make a profit. Um, we we definitely are in a space where um, people really value our service. And they really want to see us succeed, luckily, so we do really well. Oh, okay. So it's a, there's a high demand for this? There's yeah. definitely a high demand in terms of, um, yeah, the need for it, for sure. We just need to get our word out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it, um, how many drivers do you have right now? We have five drivers Five right drivers, now. okay. And are you, is this kind of in a position where you need, uh, you need more to keep yeah. up with demand? This, oh, okay, so you're hiring then? We are hiring, yeah. okay. right? We're always hiring. Okay, so that's a good position for a startup to be. Then right. you need to, you you need more people to do more business. Yeah, we need okay. more people to do more business. We don't. We the last thing we want to do is turn anybody away. Okay, and where did you uh, where did you get funding for this type of thing? We've been bootstrapping it since the beginning. Okay, 
Yeah, since the beginning. Okay. The overhead is pretty low, so we're able to do that. Most, you know, most of our, our costs are in marketing. Oh, and, really? And of course, okay. gas, but yeah, but in marketing, right. Is gas, uh, how, how much of your, your cost does gas take up? Is that a... I would no. It's not a huge percentage because um, because most of the people that are were that or my gas, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. When I drive, I have to use my gas, of course. Okay. But but <laughs> since we contract the drivers, they are okay. paying for their own gas in terms okay. of that. But I'm just saying. So most of our costs go to marketing and trying to get the word out that we that we're out there because a lot of times people will will come up to them and be like, I never even knew you guys existed, and so we're just trying to do what we can so people know. Okay, cool. Uh, and so then you're also starting a, uh, a funding campaign for a right. new, like an, an app? Right. Is it? So, okay. right. So we're trying, to, we're on Indiegogo. You can find us just sober monkeys on Indiegogo.com. And we're trying to create as the most simple way for people to get a ride. So the app we're trying to create is, is um, a dispatch app as well as a consumer app where they can just push one button and the app will locate them and their information will already be in there and then uh, the closest sober monkey driver will be there to dispatch to their location oh, okay all right cool and so you're we'll, we'll bring up the website here but you uh i get i guess you'll use like the the um location function on the right. phone to find people easier because i right. imagine that's a if, if a person's drunk they might not be able to give the best directions to their their right. location exactly right. and a lot of so. yes and that's 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 one of the um, things that we really want to make simplify is having people easily, like they're at their car and they just basically push the app. They put in, they, and they, it tells us exactly where their car is and then they can schedule the ride. And then a sober monkey, the closest sober monkey driver that's around will just go right to them. So that way it decreases the wait time and um, we can get them home before they decide, you know, sometimes people do have to wait because we have, because we, we do get backed up sometimes in certain hours. And so this way we'll have more drivers and they'll be right there and we, they can just go. Okay, cool. And if we uh, if we can show off the site again, you you get stuff for right. You running, get perks. Right? Okay. right. So when you donate, uh, one, of the, one of the perks here is this Sober Monkeys T-shirt. Exactly. Okay. So when you donate uh, twenty five or fifty dollars, I think it's twenty five dollars there. Yeah, twenty five dollars. You get a you get a Sober Monkeys T-shirt. And then um, if that, you donate. That is a cool logo, by the way. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, and if you donate, yeah, $75, then you get a Sober Monkey t shirt as well. But most of them, you are getting rides. So oh, okay. if you donate a certain amount beyond that, you're actually getting rides. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I thought it would be kind of cool to have a Sober Monkey keychain. I think it would be actually. awesome to have a Sober Monkey keychain. So yeah, if so. you donate $75, you get a t shirt and you get a keychain. And it's a bottle opener, key, open keychain. and have our logo on it. Yeah, see, yeah, I love those. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, cool. So, um, I know lots of different startups are, you know, different, have different models and everything. Is there anything, kind of any unique challenges associated? Because, like, I, I don't know about everybody else in the audience. I've had to take care of a drunk person before in my life, and it wasn't the greatest experience for me. Right. But you're kind of paying people to do that. Right. Right? So right. does that present any unique challenges? Well, when we hire drivers, I have to. I'm really selective about um, who we hire because they need to be really non-judgmental. They need to be really laid back at the same time. They need to be professional, so that when they're dealing with somebody who's who's drunk, they don't get frustrated, and they don't um, they don't start um, making any comments or anything like that. But they are creating the most safe space for somebody who's in a really vulnerable state. Right. Because being drunk, you're you are you're really vulnerable. You're you know you're not probably too trusting of people around you. People change when they start drinking, and so we do. We need people that are going to be really um, emotionally prepared for that for one, so that they don't get frustrated, and so that they're really they're more um, empathetic or sympathetic to the whole situation. So if anything comes up, they can they can really make sure that people feel like they're being taken care of and everything's okay and everything is safe. So they have to be kind of like part chauffeur and part babysitter, maybe. Maybe not babysitter <laughs> as much as they just need. They just need to be non-judgmental and just understand that these people are in a little bit of an altered state, and um, they're not going to be completely comfortable. And they may not, you know, they may not. If they're very, if they're new clients, they don't. They're not going to know you very well yet. 
And so even though we do get a lot of repeat clients, it's easier as they repeat because they know us. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you need you need to make them feel safe. You need to f- make them feel okay and that they're going to get home safely in their car and everything's going to be fine because that's one of the things you worry about. All right. Okay, well, awesome. And so are you ever going to uh, expand this to other cities in the future? Do you have any sort of right. plan to get outside Austin? Something? Yeah, we want to hit the United, the United States. We want to hit all over the United States oh, okay. with this app because we're hoping this app, what it's going to do is we're going to be able to contract people in, you know, San Antonio or in uh, California. So that drivers can sign up to be sober monkey drivers, and they can use this app, and then they can create their own, um, you know, designated driving service under sober monkeys in another in another state, and that way everybody can use the app. Okay, so you kind of want to start like I guess franchises is the right way to. I guess it wouldn't be franchises as much as well, I guess it would be considered a franchise, but everything would be done through the app. It's just kind of creating more opportunity everywhere so that people can people can. It, Make the least amount of of a hoopla trying to start a service in their city. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Because I, th- I thought I thought that would be really useful in, in, in San Antonio now. Oh yeah. I, uh, I have a, a new car and I don't want to you know drive drunk or anything. Exactly. Not that I wouldn't either. Anyway. <laughs> right. Right. Um, well, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. And uh, if you're uh, if you live in Austin out there, make sure to check that out and you know don't drive drunk. Um, and if you have any questions or comments or anything about the show, I have a, uh, a Twitter page and Facebook page. So we'll go ahead and bring those up. You can tweet me at, at Slice of Silicon. And uh, do you have a Twitter? We do. Uh, sober? Just Sober Monkeys. Sober Monkeys. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. SoberMonkeys.com. I'm on LinkedIn. Everything. <laughs> okay, cool. Everything. Okay. Well, thanks for coming on the show again. Thanks a lot. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, and we'll uh, always also thank you to Tommy Travis Rowell and Andrew and Kirsten in the Silver Fox Studios for uh, helping me put this on. And thank you for watching A Slice of Silicon Hills. Faster.